I may be known as a Filipino individual, but I don't necessarily fit into the Filipino culture as you'd expect. My parents were born and raised in the Philippines, but immigrated to Canada before I was born. My older siblings were still very young during that time period. Because of the shift of my family's environment before I came, I never really grew up learning a lot of my own culture. I also never grasped the knowledge about the language either, as my parents never taught me any Tagalog my whole life. But it's probably better that way. Actually, it would be harder for me because I'd have to take ESL growing up, so I'll be grateful instead. But still, it's not just my parents that I had to deal with not knowing about the Philippines and their culture. It was my entire family that I had to go through. My aunts, uncles, cousins, and basically 99% of my family's first language is Tagalog, to which I am the 1%. You can only imagine how my life was like during family dinners in the Philippines. All I could do was sit and eat. I mean, I do that normally. But at least in a group of English speakers, I can actually observe what the conversation is about. Not this time. It all goes through one ear and out the other. Nothing is getting through my brain at all. So what else is there in my life where I had to deal with not understanding my family's culture and language? For starters, my parents talk to each other in Tagalog all the time and only talk to me in English. The problem is that whenever I zone out in the middle of their conversation and suddenly an English phrase comes in between the sentences, my instinct will immediately assume that they're talking to me. Most of the time, that doesn't happen. What usually happens is they're quoting another person who's spoken in English, but they don't know how to translate it to Tagalog, so they just respond in English. It throws me off a lot. But there's more to that. Take it back to when I said about family dinners in the Philippines. Just any gathering with my family there. I just have to awkwardly sit and listen to something that makes no sense to me. It can also happen when my parents push me into talking with my cousins. Even when I want to be a part of their time, they'll just speak to each other in Tagalog. I mean, I know that they don't have the capability to speak English as well as I do, but how can I get along with this conversation if I don't even understand it? It doesn't work that way. That's why whenever my parents make me go on vacation to the Philippines, it can be great, but also dreadful. And it's not like I could just try to learn Tagalog. Learning a language isn't that easy. And at least for the Philippines, they teach and learn English as well, not the other way around. Especially for English speakers, Tagalog is really difficult to understand because of its grammar and sentence structure. Although, maybe I should just focus on just understanding terms rather than sentence formations. Speaking of which, here are some of the very few words that I know in Tagalog. O'o means yes, Hindi means no, Komosta means hello, Palam means bye, Salamat means thank you, Ulang Anaman means you're welcome, Ako ni kao means me and you. Those are just the base terms that I know well. It's not that great, but it's something. At least if someone were to ask me a question, chances are I might be able to respond in Tagalog. What I've also learned about Tagalog is that the term po is very important for the language. You use that term after everything when you say to an older person to sound respectful. Like, instead of saying o o hindi and salamat, I would say o po hindi po and salamat po. Moral of the story, just add po at the end of everything. Po. Even though I know terms and can understand what they mean because my parents say it a lot, it's nothing compared to the entire Tagalog lexicon. Okay, just to clear things up, I'm not the only person that doesn't know Tagalog here. Pretty much me and my siblings don't know Tagalog as well. Like I said, my siblings were young when my parents immigrated to Canada, so they don't know it too well. But my sister can understand it the most between the three of us. Sometimes my parents ask her something in Tagalog and she responds in English. That's pretty much the best we could do. I'm actually somewhat trying to be like her, where I respond to Tagalog questions, and my parents try to do it to me too. But of course, there's no way I'm gonna learn the sentence formation of anything. So for me, all I can do is listen to any terms that I know of, whether I respond with Opo or Hindi Po. But no matter what, Tagalog will still be seen as a foreign language to me. You know what else is foreign to me? Filipino food. It's not my obsession, but I wouldn't mind at least having a taste of it. A lot of Filipino foods my mom cooks for me at least 80% of those foods contain rice. I guess it's just a common resource in the Philippines. Or my mom just loves rice so much that she wants me to have it. In fact, there is actually one Filipino food that I like and really enjoy. Okay, it's not actually a food and more of a seasoning, but I like it. It's called bawa. It basically means garlic. Okay, stick with me here, please. There's this Filipino store that contains these jars of bawa. It's crushed up garlic bits and it's spicy. It's definitely my favorite thing of all things in the Philippines. I either eat it straight out of the jar or eat it in a bowl of vinegar. It's like cereal to me. Again, please stick with me here. This obsession is my guilty pleasure. 
I don't care. It's tasty. I'm sorry if any Filipinos find it weird. I'm new to the culture, so I don't know if I'm como stotting myself properly. Anyway, I think it's time for me to stop now. This is making me crave straight up garlic and vinegar right now.